Okay, the topic for today is avoid the loss of bone after extraction. So, and at first bad news is bone loss in the first year after extraction is up to 70%. Every surgeon know exactly uh, these bad data. And when we have a look at the literature, we see uh, from, from Tarnet R that the horizontal bone loss after six months is round about 50%. On average, 3.8 millimeters. And the vertical bone loss, it's round about 20% on average, 1.24 millimeters. Every implantologist know these set data. And we try to avoid the bone loss, but the problem is all the materials which are still available on the market are now are not uh, good enough to, um, uh, to, uh, to avoid the bone loss. So this is a technique we are using in the time before we had the cerasorb foam. It's a punch. You see, we make the extraction of the tooth, and then we take a punch from the palatium. You see it here, and then we insert the punch in this area to close it. When you do this technique, you uh, can avoid the bone loss around about 20 up to 30 percent. It's not good, but it's better than nothing. So. When you make a combination and put some uh, collagen into the socket, uh, you will have the same effect. So it's around about 20 up to 30 percent. You can avoid the bone loss after extraction. So when you make a combination of the both techniques, the collagen in the socket, and on the other hand, you use the, uh, the soft tissue patch, uh, you not uh, unfortunately you not got the um, uh, the better way that you're only losing uh, around about 50%. No, it's the same same um, result. You're losing 20 up to 30%. So it's not good enough when you want to talk about the residues you at intake room, um, so that the patients who got the implants uh, looking uh, um, very fine. Here you see the uh, soft tissue patch again. This is a hole. We cover it uh, easy. It's no problem. And after a week, the patients don't have any problems. So we make a study design with the um, Kurazan company. We uh, take 39 patients for a socket preservation study. It was a randomized split mouse design. So it means on uh, on one half of the uh, maxilla, for instance, we use the um, cerasorb foam, and on the other side, uh, we're using um, the stupocubus. This is a pure collagen. So why we did do we did we use the stupocubus? Because we have very clear data about the collagen in the socket preservation, and then we know exactly what's going on with our cerasorb foam. So we had six different surgeons. They are here in my department for maxillofacial surgery. So they, everybody of them is using um, the, uh, uh, taking part in this study. So we have controls after one week, after one month, and after four months. After four months, we make the implantation. So we make a clinical examination and the X-ray. In some cases, we have histology, we make histologies. Unfortunately, we have five dropouts. Um, in uh, two cases, um, the patient uh, left our city, yeah, and two other cases, uh, we, are, we are not allowed to make some implants in this case because the patient don't want to have implants. So this is the material looks like. What you're seeing now, it's the collagen structure, and here in this area, and in this area, you can see the TCP. So we have a mixture from collagen and from TCP. Here you see it again. This is the collagen here in this area. It's collagen. And here you see the uh, structure of the TCP. So why did we mix these two materials? We know very exactly, and we'll show you the scientific data later on that 
the collagen is responsible for uh, for the blood coagulation. So um, we can have a better blood coagulation when we put collagen into the socket. Okay, but everybody knows only by stabilizing the uh, the collagen the the blood plot. It's not enough to get a real good socket preservation. So when we only use the TCP for a socket preservation, we know we have a lot of healing problems because there are a lot of cases and there are a lot of studies shown us that only by using the, um, um, the TCP, we got more inflammation in this area. So we decided to mix the two materials and we had two groups at first. We have a HD means high density. It means we have 0.5 gram TCP per cubic centimeter collagen. This is a high D um, variante. And we have the LD, it's 0.2 gram uh, TCP per cubic centimeter collagen. At first, I thought this is a better group. But after some experiments, we saw that the healing healing is not so good. So we decided to take the low density um, for for our socket and rich preservation study. And this is the material is, which is still available on the market now. So I will show you the first case. Uh, you see a patient with a big parodontitis problem in a lot of teeth. And uh, here you see a big granuloma. And the three implants here, they are, I made them round, round about when we make the operation 25 years ago. These are very old tapered screw end implants, ta, implants from the Simmer company. And I didn't use them more not now, not for 20 years. So it's a very old patient and we are lucky. It's not that he, uh, that the patient has no peri-implantitis here in this area. It's not my brilliant surgeries. It's only luck. Uh, normally, we don't have a, we we will have here deep defects in this area, but we are lucky. So we have to make an extraction at first. The patient want to have a reconstruction of the maxilla. And this is the way we did the study. So we make it randomized. So uh, in this case, we have the cerasorb foam on the left side of the patient. You see it here. This is the foam. And on the other side, we have the collagen. So, and we want to have a very simple protocol. So we don't make, we don't use any patches. We don't make no Raman plasty, nothing. Only a simple suturing to uh, to stabilize the collagen or the TCP in the alveola. That's it. So uh, this is the same case. It's a um, um, post-OP uh, uh, X-ray, and you see here in this area maybe a little more dense because this is the TCP, and this in in this area you have the collagen. When we have the control. Um, and we remove the stitches after 10 days, you see a very good healing on both sides. So for, for the collagen area, it's clear. So we know very exactly uh, that the collagen in the, uh, in the socket speed up a little bit the healing process in this area. But we saw the same effect on the um, foam side. We make a DVT scan and this is some thing very interesting and we we saw this in every case just have a look here this is the collagen side and you see the roots of the teeth were here in this area and this is the side from the tcp you see here we have a loss of the uh, vestibular bone wall in this area in this area and that area and this is the area from the uh, tcp side and there is not no loss of the bone wall of the uh, vestibular bone wall. This is very important, especially for implantology. When you want to insert an implant, you need this wall. This is uh, very important for for your success. And this is the clinical view. Um, I 
uh, I got a lot of questions from colleagues which are still using the material now and they said okay what's going on there um, um, uh, I can see still the material and you see it here this is TCP here you can see TCP and this is TCP 2, uh, 2. this is not a problem leave it where it is it's no problem in this area this was a collagen and you see the dimples here in this area this is very typical for a healing protocol for a socket preservation protocol with collagen and you see here the loss of the bone and here you see the uh, vestibular bone wall is uh, is protected so we can, still can have it here and this is a very important fact for the implantology <laughs> Um, so this is after implantation. You see the one, two, three, four, five implants. We inserted there here. We have to make a sinus lift, but it's no problem. And here, this area, you know, just have a look here. There's a TCP area. Uh, so we extracted a tooth here. This was a tooth. Uh, I guess it was two two. So in here from this area. And you see here the one, two, three, four, five implants, and these are the old implants. And this area, this was the punch biopsy. So we filled it up with uh, Cerasorb M because we know very exactly when the bone walls are uh, in a good condition. Yeah, we can use the Cerasorb M. This is, I'm sure, the best material for this question. We make. 200 sinus lifts, 400 sinus lift, lifts a year, and we're only using the Cerasorb M, but I guess the most of you do it too. And this is a, a punch biopsy. And uh, I sent it to a friend of mine. It's uh, Werner Götz. He is uh, uh, the head of uh, oral pathology in the university in Bonn and is an so old study friend of mine. And um, I sent it to him and I asked him, OK, Werner, what is it? And he said, oh, Frank, it's always the same old story. You sent me some bone and there's some bone replacement material inside. So it's always the same. He said, yeah, it's the same indeed. But um, please tell me, what do you think? How old? is the bone. And Werner said, OK, I can see some bone replacement, um, some uh, uh, bone um, uh, materials here uh, and uh, here. It's Cerasorb M, this Cerasorb M, perhaps here. This is Cerasorb M. So you can see some materials. Um, and he said, but the bone is looking very nice. I guess it's uh, round about eight up to nine months. And I said, no, Anna, you're wrong. It's much easier. It's around about uh, three months. And he said, you, you're joking. It's not possible. Because after this uh, period of time, the bone never look uh, this way. You see the, uh, the laminar structure here of this bone. And normally, it takes up to six months to achieve uh, such a goal. I said, OK, <coughs> sorry. Um, um, we will discuss it later on. This is the second case, same story, uh, big periodontitis, a lot of teeth uh, which have to be extracted. And um, you see, um, we put the Sarasorb form on the right side here and here, and the Stupocubus on the other side. And I show you this picture here. This is the form. So, uh, and when you remember at the beginning of my lecture, I showed you the two versions we got from the Cerasorb form, the LD, light density, and the HD, the heavy density. And I, I showed you that the light density version has 0.2 grams TCP per cubic centimeter collagen. So just imagine you take this material in your fingers and press it. What's happened? So then you change the material and you get a high density material because the ceramics, the TCP, um, is hard, it will stay, and the collagen is soft. So you press it together and you have a higher concentration on TCP. And this is not very good for the primer wound healing because you need the collagen. So when you use this, this material, B 
be careful with the material. You can take it like I did with the forceps, but don't press it. So I take a pair of scissors and make a easy cut, so like a root, and press it softly into the socket. And you will see when you put it inside, the collagen is swelling up because of the of the blood into the socket and then you got the stabilization and then you make the easy suturing and that's enough so for you don't press the material otherwise you will change the characterism of this material so and this is the same picture we saw um, uh, by the other patient, when we remove the stitches, you see a wonderful healing on both sides because of the collagen. And uh, this is a patient after uh, two months, so we decided to insert the implants. Here was the socket preservation. You can see very clearly what's going on there. This is a TCP. You can still see the TCPs there, but you see the whole alveola. Isn't it wonderful? And you see the bone resorption in this area because there wasn't any T's here in this area. But here we extract this tooth and you see exactly we can cover the whole bone in this area. It's wonderful. So, and this is a normal picture here. You see a sinus lift and this is Cerasorb M uh, to make the reconstruction there on the posterior maxilla. And this is the uh, other side. This is a preparation of the sinus. Yeah, we did it on the other side. So and you see here is a very slim rim. So we may have to make an augmentation in this area. So uh, we harvest a J graft. It's uh, normal. Everybody knows that. And we taking uh, we take care that we uh, we don't crash the material. We don't use any titanium mesh or something like this. It's a osteosynthesis. We do this in area to, to widen up the bone in, in this part. So here you see uh, the osteosynthesis screws from the J-graft. This is a sinus lift on both sides. And here you see the foam uh, in this area. And you can see the TCP here in this area. Here was the collagen and we didn't see the collagen in the X-ray control. And this is, I go one back, you see the date, it's, it's, uh, it's in November, it's four months later. So, and what can you see? I go back just, so I love the, the sinus lifting and uh, the Cerasorb M. Just have a look, here this is the material and this is the material for sinus lifting. And after four months, you see the degradation of this material. So it's it's very old, I know, and this is not our topic today, but you can see it very clearly in this X-ray. Uh, the resorption of this material starting and we got in this area autogenous bone. And this is the, way, uh, the reason why we do uh, uh, external sinus lifting. And here, this was our foam area. We achieve bone and in this area we will have a look. So here this is the area and we have the same result I showed you before. We can um, avoid the bone loss. We can obtain the whole uh, bone in this area, the whole alveolo alveola and can insert very easy here the implant. On the other side we have the J graft, yeah. So this is very easy, but here you have a look, and this was a collagen in this side. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a very big and good bone uh, reconstruction there in this area. Okay, this is the X ray uh, post OP, and you see we can insert the implants very easy. This is two sinus lift areas. This was the foam area, and here this was the area for the J graft. And this was the area here, you see it, it's the area where we insert the collagen, the pure collagen. It's after uncovery of the implants, uh, um, four months later, and you see the total recovering a resorption of the Cerasorb M and a good ingrowth of the implants. And we can harvest um, histology here too. Uh, and what did we see? We see the same histology I showed you before. It's a laminar bone structure. So normally we got it after six months. So we, it's, it's a very good result. But what's, what, what is impressive, it's 
this picture here. It's a mineralization and you see the orange color. This is the area where we saw a lot of calcium and mineralization of the bone. And this shows us very clearly what's going on with our TCP. And I will show you later on some literature um, which showed us that uh, the resorption of the TCP um, has the result that we have a higher calcium concentration in this area where we insert the TCP. And this is responsible for this high mineralization in this area and this change our protocol and our thinking about bone regeneration and about synthetic materials. We will discuss it later on. Third case, same story. Yeah, we have to extract tools on both sides, but I want to show you this case because you see it here. We have a big uh, uh, connection to the sinus. Yeah, in German, we call it mund antrum verbindung Here is a big hole in this area, and you can have a look directly into the sinus maxillaris. So every surgeon knows what we have to do now. We have to make an insertion here and here and make a Riemann plasty. And the problem is, when we make a Riemann plasty, we change the gingiva style in this area. We put the front here between the two soft tissue areas up, and this is not very good for implantology, especially in this area when we have to place big implants. This is a picture after insertion of the cerisorb form. Same protocol, easy suturing, and just have a look what we did there. This is the foam. You see some TCP particles here in this area, and it's the easy suturing. Easy suturing, no incision, no Raman plasty. This is the X-ray control. Um, here we inserted the uh, um, collagen. Collagen. Here you see the TCP form, and you can see very exactly. This is a very normal picture because you see here um, uh, the uh, uh, collagen. It's looking like there's anything because uh, you can see the collagen on the x-ray and here you didn't see the collagen either but you can see the uh, particles of the tcp okay and this is the uh, picture after uh, removing the sutures and the same we saw it in every case a very easy and uh, inflammation free healing in this area in both sides and just have a look at the D4T scan and take a careful look what's going on here and what's going on there. Here you see the same picture. We got a loss of the vestibular bone and here on the palatinal wall too. And just have a look on the other side. There we have to extract the both molar. So this side is more complicated because we extract both molars on this side. There is still one, and this molar protect the bone, but here isn't any. So, and here on this side, we have the protection with the cerisorb foam. And when we have make the cross section in this area, see, you just remember here in this area, there was the big connection mouse sinus, and it's closed. You still can see here, it's all the TCP material. It's still inside, yeah, but there is no inflammation. You see a very clear ground, sinus floor ground, and it's, it's a wonderful result. And we measured this, and we can achieve 9.6 millimeters bone. It's amazing. So we measured the other sides here. It's a little bit slim, so uh, we have to make some augmentation there. But the point I want to discuss now is this area. You remember the big holes after the extraction of the two molars and the sinus mouse connection. And you see here, this are still TCP in this area. This was the old alveolar, but it's covered with a with bone. 
So we got a very early bone formation and when you drill into this bone, it's it's soft. Definitely it's soft. So you have to change your drilling protocol a little bit. So we working a lot with punches in this area uh, and we are very, very careful with the drilling because it's a soft bone. On the other side, you see very good bone healing, but you see here the resorption of the vestibular wall and here you see we can obtain the whole bone in this area you see here this was inflammation now we got here a nice new bone formation this area there is still some bone missing so uh, we make an uh, bone splitting and uh, augmentation this area so on this side where we inserted the collagen we have to make an external sinus lift and we started with it when we started with this case this side looked to be easier but now here on this on that side we don't have to make external sinus lifting even if we don't we have the uh, the mouse sinus connection on this side so we only make an internal lifting a summers technique to push the bone a little bit up so it's much easier and this is the case after uncovery of the implants. You see here very nice bone in this area. In this area too, the sinus lift is working very fine. It's working very fine. Um, but in the, on that side, we can avoid the external sinus lift. Same histology. Yeah, we still see some material inside, but a laminar bone structure in this area. So we are very, very, very happy uh, about the cases and the study. So uh, uh, in my office, um, we only use this material for socket and ridge preservation. And we have more than 2000 cases uh, till up, to up now. So, and we ask, okay, is it a miracle? Why can we achieve such a big amount of bone uh, after extraction of the teeth, and we have a look. We, we had a look at the literatures, and we saw um, a lot of studies. And I will show you some. So the first one is when we raise up the concentration of calcium in a defect from one millimole up to five millimole, we have a cell number. It's a. It's a. Uh, reconstruction rate it's four times higher wow this is a big number so we, we only have to put we raise up a little bit the concentration of calcium in the alveola and we got four times four times higher bone regeneration in this area so another uh, paper um, it showed us very clearly, it's here from, from the guys from England, that the activation of the receptor by calcium triggers an intercellular cascade of secondary messengers producing a variety of biological effects, including bone derived cell lines. So this, page, uh, this paper showed us calcium is very very important for bone regeneration and when i have a look at this page uh, at, at these pictures uh, i said okay frank you must be so stupid so we have a, another system in our body where proteins got an got in calcium trigger so you know exactly when we are uh, talking about coagulation yeah calcium has an important role. So we have, when we have problems with coagulation, at first we check we check the different factors. But when they're okay, we have a look at the calcium, and we can uh, uh, we we can heal some defects in the coagulation by using a higher level of calcium. And the same the same story when we're talking about bone regeneration. Just another picture here from the Italian guys, um, they showed us that 
systolic calcium increase is one way of the messengers of the pathway that inhibits bone resorption. So calcium is not only responsible for the uh, um, for the um, for the building for the rebuilding of the bone. To uh, it's also responsible to avoid the resorption of the bone. So there are two effects which directly um, responsible where well, calcium is directly responsible in our body. So this is the study from our Japanese guys, and when I I read this paper, I, I said, okay, this is too much for me. And you know, I'm a real fan from T calcium phosphate. They they said TCP has an osteoinductivity after implantation without the use of bone marrow cells or osteoinductive cytokines. I said, okay. So osteoinductivity means for me up to this time, I have to put some proteins or marrow cells into a defect to get an osteoinductivity. But now I know very exactly I didn't use biological materials to achieve this goal. I can activate the human, the 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 uh, the, the the cell lines, the cytokines from the patient by raising up the calcium level. So this is a very easy way, and you don't have to discuss uh, uh, blood products, infection, and so on, because the cerasorb. Uh, M and Cerasorb, the Cerasorb foam, are totally safe because they are synthetic materials. At, la, uh, at least uh, another study from fin Finland, and they can show very exactly that the effect of calcium stim stimulation on parat hormone release could be seen without any any without uh, within 60 minutes so when you uh, and you know that the parat hormone is responsible for the regulation of our bone management bone rebuilding bone resorption so the calcium ha also has an effect on the parat hormone and this is also very responsible for the uh, regeneration of the bone in the defects so what are my conclusion for this material so i'm very happy because this material is very, very easy to handle. You don't have to be a very uh, skillful surgeon to use this material. Every normal dentist can use it. And it, it's a big, big advantage for our patients. So we can obtain bone after extraction. We reduced bone loss more than 70%. And uh, dear colleagues, it's not so easy to measure it. So for my opinion, uh, 70% I, I show you here on this slide, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's not the true, I guess it's higher, but at this point of time, we are not allowed to document it very well. So when I have a, a sec approach to my, to my socket uh, to insert the implant, I normally see the uh, totally bone structure in this area. So the healing in the Cerasorb foam group was as fast as the healing in the Stupo group. This was very fine. You just remember at the beginning of my lecture when I'm talking about high density and low density. So uh, this is the reason why we take the low density uh, um, collagen group because we have a bigger amount of the collagen and this is responsible for the first healing of the soft tissue healing and this isn't something new but we can uh, mix up the two effects with the uh, collagen on one side and the TCP on the other side. Yeah and we can avoid surgery in case of most sinus connection. Um, this is very, very good for our patient and it makes things easier and this is the bad news for maxillofacial surgeons or for oral surgeons, we can avoid big augmentation. Indeed, we love it to do it very much and uh, it's nice surgery to harvest bone from the hip or from the jaw or from everywhere and to make a transplantation. But um, unfortunately with this material, um, we can avoid the big augmentation because um, we are uh, 
obtain the bone after extraction. Yeah, this is a look on an old ferry boat from my hometown. Um, it connects one lakeside from Konstanz to the other side to Meersburg. And with this picture, I want to uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.